Peace be with you. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Jesus via Mary. The best, surest, and the quickest way to the sacred heart of Jesus is through his mother, the Blessed Virgin, the Immaculate Conception. She's our mother too. Mary, our mother. Let's begin with a prayer. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. My friends, we have consecrated our entire apostolate, including our radio ministry, to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Totus tuus, we are all yours, and everything we have is yours, Immaculata. Lead us and guide us. Today's program is dedicated to St. John Paul II. Brothers and sisters, today is the feast of St. Rita of Cassia in Italy. Her feast day is on May 22nd, and she was canonized on May 24th. Those two dates bracket the birthday of yours truly. No, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. But that's what first drew me to St. Rita. She's known as the saint of impossible causes. So she's a good one to pray to. And it's no wonder that today is the day, on her feast day, that we begin talking to you about something very, very special. Less than three months ago, we thought it would be impossible for us to even have a radio program. And now, here we are, ready to begin talking to you and with you about the new and divine holiness. Yes, today we begin sharing with you and attempting with our best humble efforts to explain the new and divine holiness of the third Christian millennium. Most of what we share will be taken from the book of the same title, which was written by Mr. Hugh Owen and published by the John Paul II Institute of Christian Spirituality. Mr. Rowan is director of the Institute, and both he and Mr. Thomas Fay, F-A-H-Y, the president of the Institute, have given Mary's littlest children, that's our apostolate, that brings you this program, permission to read from the book. We also have access to their website, to which we will turn occasionally for perhaps deeper understanding or further clarification of certain points of discussion. We suggest that you obtain the book also for yourself and that you visit the website. If you want more information about these two resources, send us an email. Our address is to Jesus via Mary at AOL.com. You can also request the link whereby you can access all of our recent programs. From time to time you will undoubtedly want to hear a program that you missed or perhaps listen once again to a program that had very special meaning for you. We'll be talking about the exemplars. This term refers to the saints and the blesseds so named by the Church, the Catholic Church, who have at least to some extent achieved the new and divine holiness. As we mention their names, we will not stop to give you a biographical sketch because that would severely limit our time. Over a period, however, you'll get to know each of them very well by continually listening to our program. Obtaining the book for yourself will enable you to stay ahead of us in this regard if you so choose. Without further ado, let's begin. 
What I'm going to give you now, ladies and gentlemen, is a very short synopsis of how to obtain and to live the new and divine holiness. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the grace to believe that Jesus wants to share the fullness of his divine life with you. Recognize the will of your all-loving Father as the source of all that exists in time and in eternity. Having firmly repented of your sins, give Jesus your will and ask him to make the will of the Father reign in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask Our Lady and the Holy Spirit to unite you to Jesus so that you can share in his life in the bosom of the Father and so that he can share in your life. By faith be present to Jesus in all the mysteries of his life, death, and resurrection, especially as they are made present in the Eucharist in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Offer yourself to the Father in every Mass and in frequent acts of spiritual communion. Together with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, ask the Holy Spirit to consecrate you into a living Jesus a living host, H-O-S-T, in whom the will of the Father will reign freely and fruitfully. Think, say, and do everything with Jesus in eternity. Together with Jesus, make your constant intention the glory of the Father and the good of all souls, past, present, and future. Believe that by doing this you are doing good to all souls and hastening the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the era of peace, and the Eucharistic reign of Jesus. Let us pray. O Father, may your will, made known in Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, reign in us through Mary. Holy Spirit, Mother Mary, unite us to Jesus, that together we may live in the bosom of the Father, in the heart of the Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll talk about living the new and divine holiness. In the lives and writings of the exemplars of the new and divine holiness, Jesus has laid bare his pure and holy heart to our sinful generation. Indeed, the new and divine holiness is essentially a new and deeper understanding of and sharing in the divine human life of Jesus. We can review the secrets of the Sacred Heart of Jesus as he has revealed them to the exemplars and see how we can use them to share more fully in his interior life. What secrets of the Sacred Heart stand revealed in the lives and writings of the exemplars? First, that the interior life of Jesus is totally focused on the will of his Father, both in time and in eternity. As Jesus told Venerable Conchita, even in eternity he is always aware that he receives his entire being from his Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Jesus told her, I owed him divine life, since he engendered me eternally, and human life by the Holy Spirit, who is his Spirit. For this reason I did not forget him for an instant on earth. The second secret of the Sacred Heart revealed in the writings of the Exemplars is that when Jesus became man, he emptied himself and abandoned his human will to the will of his Father through the action of the Holy Spirit. Again, as he told Conchita, 
Every movement of my soul has been inspired and carried out under the movement of the Holy Spirit. He it is who animates my faculties, my senses, my will, holding them in his possession for the glory of the Father, to whom I return everything. The Holy Spirit shaped and lifted that humanity into eternity, so that Jesus lived the Father's will on earth as in heaven. The Holy Spirit shaped and lifted that humanity into eternity so that Jesus lived in time and space, but bodily on this earth he lived simultaneously in eternity. Thus Jesus in his human life was present to each and every one of us in the timelessness of eternity. As the incarnate word, he was present in a way that allowed him to be active then as now in each and every moment of our lives for the good of every soul. In the same way, by faith, we can allow Jesus to make his divine life reciprocally present to us in the eternal now of each and every one of his acts in a way that allows us to be active in those acts. Thus we become sharers in the divine life. The Catechism tells us that Jesus willed humanly all that he willed divinely with the Father and the Holy Spirit for our, our salvation. In Ephesians 2.10 St. Paul tells us that we are God's handiwork created in Christ, that is in the God-man for good works that he has prepared for us that we should work, walk in them. This means that Jesus continually willed that each of our acts be good, pure, and holy with his own divine holiness as acts of God's own handiwork. It means that Jesus suffered for and in our every act that falls short of his divine holiness. He suffered the pain, the shame, the guilt, and the punishment for each and every sin. But it also means that he has willed a perfect act of love for you and for me for each and every moment of our lives. If we appropriate this gift, each one of those acts of love, those works, takes on Jesus' perfect intention. The greatest, greatest glory of the Father and the good of all souls, past, present, and future. Moreover, those acts of love that Jesus willed in time and in eternity are made present in the Eucharist. As Jesus told Conchita, All my life is renewed on the altar, my incarnation, my life, and my death. Not just the sufferings of Calvary, but his whole life, because the whole of his 33 years was marked by the cross. This truth that Jesus has prepared acts of perfect love for you and for me is the key to understanding the divine holiness that the Holy Spirit is offering us in this third millennium. And the fact that these acts of perfected love that Jesus has prepared for us are made present in the Eucharist unlocks the meaning of that phrase that recurs so often in the writings of the exemplars the phrase living host. In the lives and writings of the exemplars Jesus invites us to renounce the independent use of our human will and to ask the Holy Spirit to consecrate us into living hosts. Then the Holy Spirit will inspire us to do those acts of perfect love that Jesus has prepared for us in the secret recesses of his heart. And if we allow him a free reign, he may bring us to the point where we will always be doing the perfect acts of love that Jesus has prepared for us. Thus, we may become a real presence of Jesus in the world, a living Eucharist. 
What does a living Eucharist look like in reality? First, it may be helpful to look at two examples of what he or she does not look like. Consider the case of a Christian in the state of sanctifying grace. One day he walks through a park and sees a foreigner looking sad and lonely. Immediately the Christian receives an inspiration to talk to the stranger, but he resists the grace and keeps on walking. Several times he receives the same inspiration, but ignores it. Finally it leaves him. Has the Christian lost the indwelling of the Holy Trinity that he received in baptism? No, he has not. He has not committed a mortal sin. But can he offer his act of ignoring the Spirit's inspiration with Jesus to the Father? No, he cannot. The friendly gesture to a stranger was one of those good works prepared beforehand by Christ for that Christian who chose not to walk in God's perfect way. Jesus offers the Father a perfect act of love on behalf of his hard-hearted disciple and compensates for his negligence. However, while there is still communion between him and his disciple, there is no unity of wills. Now compare that to a second example. Another Christian in the state of sanctifying grace walks through the same park five minutes later and sees the same sad-looking foreigner. Immediately he too receives an inspiration to greet the stranger, but he follows his inspiration. As he does, he realizes that he is participating in a good work prepared for him by Jesus. But he does not believe that Jesus is performing the good work in him and with him. He believes that he is doing it himself, under the inspiration of the Spirit for the Father, in communion with Jesus, but not with Jesus, not in eternity, and not for the good of all souls, past, present, and future. And now a third example. The same Christian cited in the previous example has learned of the spirituality described in this book before walking through the park and meeting the foreigner. Immediately he receives an inspiration to greet the stranger and follows it instantly. As he does so, he realizes that he is participating in a good work prepared for him by Jesus. However, he also asks the Holy Spirit to unite him to Jesus in performing that good work, not only on behalf of the stranger, but for the whole intention of Jesus, that is, for the glory of the Father and for the good of all souls, past, present, and future. By faith he allows the Holy Spirit and Our Lady, Mediatrix of all graces, to unite him with Jesus in eternity. Moreover, by faith he knows that the action of Jesus in him is a divine and eternal act that touches all souls in all times and places. In this way the soul acts not only in union with Jesus, but in unity, in a perfect unity of wills. As this way of thinking and acting becomes a permanent state, as it did for Blessed Dina Ballinger and Venerable Conchita, the soul will come to abide in the heart of the Trinity and to allow Jesus to act in and through her at every moment. How do we attain so lofty a state? First, we must believe that Jesus wants every man, woman, and child to share in this divine life and to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. As Jesus told Conchita, I did not choose saints to tell them be perfect as my heavenly Father is perfect. I addressed myself to all men, to the good and to the evil. All without exception are obliged to sanctify themselves. Second, we must recognize that we are living in what Pope John Paul II has called a fullness of time, an unprecedented hour of divine mercy. The Vicar of Christ on earth tells us that the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and an era of peace may be imminent. 
Moreover, St. Paul's letter to the Romans assures us that where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Thus, we can be sure that the unprecedented evils of our time must be swallowed up in an unprecedented outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Armed with this awareness, we can confidently approach the throne of grace, recalling the words of Jesus to his disciples. If you who are evil know how to do good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? As we enter what St. Maximilian Kolbe called the era of the Holy Spirit and Our Lady, we must first ask Our Lady to give us the faith to believe that Jesus wants to give us the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that he wants us to share in his divine life more intimately than ever before. This is the first and most necessary step to living the new and divine holiness. I'm going to read that last part again. As we enter what St. Maximilian Kolbe called the era of the Holy Spirit and Our Lady, we must first ask Our Lady to give us the faith to believe that Jesus wants to give us the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that he wants us to share in his divine life more intimately than ever before. This is the first and most necessary step to living the new and divine holiness. The second step is to ask Our Lady and the Holy Spirit to unite us to the Sacred Heart of Jesus so that we may love the Father as Jesus loves him. If we persevere in this prayer, as Blessed Dina and Venerable Conchita did, the Holy Spirit will help us to recognize the will of the Father as the source of all that is in time and in eternity. Eventually, we will be able to say with Blessed Dina, Each event, whatever it may be, seems like a warm ray of sunlight issuing from the very center of the infinite Sun, capital S-U-N, that is the heart of the Trinity. The third step to sharing fully in the divine life of Jesus is to empty ourselves and to exchange the independent use of our human will for the reign of the divine will in our souls through the action of the Holy Spirit. A simple prayer from the heart is all that is needed. A prayer through the intercession of Our Lady, the Mediatrix of all graces. Father, may your will, made known in Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, reign in me through Mary. Let me read that prayer again. It's very short but very powerful. Father, may your will, made known in Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, reign in me through Mary. But to make the, pray, the prayer sincere, we must be sure that we cleanse our souls of sin through the sacrament of penance. Moreover, we must wholeheartedly renounce any thought, word, or action contrary to the will of God, as revealed by the teachings of the Church, by just civil laws, just civil laws, those that are just, or by the duties of our state in life. As we continually renew this prayer of abandonment from the depth of our hearts, the Holy Spirit will unite us to the heart of Jesus in eternity, just as he did the soul of Blessed Dina Ballinger. We will still live in our little niche in time and space, but we will also live with Jesus in eternity. There we will find in act the entire divine human life of Jesus from the moment of his conception to the moment of his death on Calvary. By faith we will be able to present to Jesus in all of the mysteries of his human life. Like Dina Ballinger we can keep him company in the Garden of Gethsemane or in the secret sufferings of his hidden life. No longer 
will we regard the life of our blessed Savior merely as a historical event, but as an eternal reality. The Mass, the Rosary, private prayer will come alive for us. We will delight to be with Jesus at any time of the day or of the night. As the Spirit leads us, we will keep Jesus company by faith in all of the mysteries of his life, loving, adoring, and thanking him on behalf of all souls, past, present, and future. But that is not all. As we allow the Holy Spirit to lift us by faith into eternity, we will realize the truth of the words of Pope Pius XII in his encyclical, Mystici Corporis. In virtue of the beatific vision, from the womb he, Jesus, has forever and continuously had present to him all the members of his mystical body and embraced them with his saving love. Indeed, as we follow the Spirit's lead, thinking, speaking, and acting with Jesus, with the same intention that Jesus had, we will truly become another humanity of Jesus. Our thoughts will become his thoughts, our words his words, our actions his actions, all for the greatest glory of the Father and for the good of all souls, past, present, and future. As we persevere in praying, Jesus, think in my thinking, speak in my speaking, work in my working, pray in my praying, the Holy Spirit will confirm us in our union with Jesus. We will begin to look at all of God's work in creation, redemption, and sanctification through the eyes of Jesus. We will join with Jesus in giving thanks to the Father for all creatures. We will join with Jesus in suffering for all souls. We will join with Jesus in rejoicing in the work of the Holy Spirit in all souls, past, present, and future, but most especially in the souls of the apostles of the latter days the living hosts of the Eucharistic reign of Jesus. St. Uh, Hannibal de Francia, in a consecration prayer that he wrote for his Daughters of Divine Zeal, an order of nuns that he formed, he referred to three fiats, or divine interventions in the history of the universe. These were the fiat of creation in the beginning, the fiat of redemption, at the Incarnation, and the fiat of sanctification in our times, with which, in his words, begins the new spirit of a new holiness. Elsewhere in his writings, St. Hannibal equated this third fiat with the fulfillment of the Lord's Prayer petition, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Through a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit that would form souls who surpass the saints of days gone by. The Catechism seems to confirm this relationship between the sanctifying action of the Holy Spirit and the coming of the fullness of the Kingdom of God. It teaches that, since Pentecost, the coming of that reign is the work of the Spirit of the Lord, who completes His work on earth and brings us to the fullness of grace. Moreover, it would seem that a number of the fathers of the church, the early fathers, equated the fulfillment of the Lord's Prayer with the ongoing action of the Holy Spirit. According to the New American Bible Commentary, some early church fathers used the words, May your Holy Spirit come upon us and cleanse us, as a substitute for the petition, Your Kingdom Come. Well, my friends, are you overwhelmed? don't be. It's the beginning. You've heard it for the first time. You're going to grow to love it. You're going to grow to live it. And you're going to love to live it. Join us again next time. And we'll see if we can open up your heart and mind some more to the new and divine holiness. Take care. God bless. Mother Mary be with us. We love you.